In this episode, I'm going to be looking into building a thermal electric generator. Now, I was recently reintroduced to thermal electric generators because I knew they existed and we've kind of all seen them. If you see the fans that go on top of wood burners and you just put it on there and magically the fan will start turning. Well, that's using thermal electric generation. Now, as I said, I was reintroduced to them because I didn't know how easy they are to actually make. Uh, there is a company out there that does make them. I believe they're in America. Um, but yeah, you can make them yourself. So I want to make one. Now, this uh, project didn't go exactly to plan. So by the end of this video, if you're watching it and you have any advice or maybe you want to correct me on anything that I've maybe done wrong, please do because there's not a lot of informational videos out there about them so it is a project it is making it up as it goes along kind of thing so yeah if you have any help and advice please do let me know in the comments because this is going to be a two-part episode okay so let's have a look at what we've got to make this project work first of all i've got a 1.5 millimeter aluminium sheet it's 300 by 300. This was the biggest size I could get um, through Amazon. Um, everything that I've bought here is from Amazon, so I will leave a link in the description below. So that's what we're gonna try and make our casing with. And the next thing that we've got, what should I do next? I suppose this. Next thing we've got is a aluminium heatsink. Now this is, again, the biggest that I could get. Um, and it is kind of the perfect size to be honest with you because we've got 10 of these tech uh, modules here and this is what we're going to use to hopefully try and generate some power i'll go into a bit more detail with them in a minute and to not attach these to it but to uh, help the heat transfer and the cold transfer happen we've got some thermal paste now this is the first time I've actually opened it and it's pretty small so I'm hoping that I have got enough because you have to do both sides again I'll go into more detail on that in a bit we've then got a 5 amp voltage regulator we've got a USB port on here which is going to power our dual fans these are 80 millimeters wide and has a little usb port on it and it's also got a little uh, sort of dial on the side so you can set it to a certain speed and then we've also got another terminal on here which is going to run to some terminal posts these are m6 i believe you've got two voltage regulators here so you can set them to what voltage you want Obviously we'll do one for five amp for the USB and the other one, uh, we're probably gonna run it to uh, 12 or 14 volts and it will come out of this port here. And then that will go to a MPP charger, which we've also got all really wired up. And yeah, we'll just try and send as much power as we can to that. So we uh, can charge the batteries a little bit. So as I said, this is our dual fan, which is gonna sit on top. And this is going to cool down the aluminium. So on one side we're going to have the wood stove, which is going to be our hot. And on the other side we'll have this aluminium heat sink, which will dissipate the heat that we're just going to transfer through it and keep the other side cool. So let me go into a little bit more detail of how these work. Now, these are usually found in, remember those like little mini fridges that every kid wanted in their uh, bedroom? to store like two coke cans well this is how they work if you pass electrical current through this one side will get really hot and one side will get really cold and i believe the way that it works is that you're taking the heat from one side putting it out through the other now there are two types of these there are a teg module which is a thermal electric generator and there is a tech module which is what these are and these are a thermal electric cooling now they kind of work the exact same way um, 
you pass electrical current through this, one side would get really hot and one side would get really cold. Now, what you can do to make it a generator is you can add the heat on one side and you can add the cool on the other side, which you're then generating electricity. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to use a wood burner to supply the heat from the bottom and then we're going to put a heat sink on top with a fan to keep this side cool. And in theory, that's going to generate electricity. Now, I'm really not expecting this to produce a lot of electricity. It's not something that we're going to use as like a permanent source of electricity. Um, but if it can cover having our lights on in the evening or running the fridge, then that's great. Because all I'm doing is just sticking it on a wood burner and leaving it there. Obviously, I'm only going to be using this over winter. And then in the summer, we obviously have our solar, which is what we use mostly. We still get a little bit of sun in the in the winter as well, so this is this is just basically just to keep us slightly topped up, I guess. So about a week ago, I did a design for the housing that's going to be around this, and what I did was put it all together, took it all apart, and I've just used a prick stick to stick it onto this plate. Uh, we still got like the protective film that's over this so it would be nice and easy to take it off but what I can do now is just get my grinder and go around it all and cut it all out which makes it a lot easier and then where I'm just going to be folding it all I'm just going to do some shallow sort of cuts on it not all the way through just to help me bend it all the way around and then the way that I'm going to do it is with the fan we've got sort of screw holes in each corner and once I fold it round I'm then going to use these screw holes to hold it together, hopefully. So the way this is going to work is these modules are going to be all in line along the bottom here. We will then have the heat sink sitting on top with a little bit of modifications to it. And then there'll be a little bit of an air gap and the fan will be sitting on top, keeping the aluminium heat sink nice and cold. And then our voltage regulator is going to sit here at the top on the side and then from there we're going to have our uh, terminal posts now looking at this now I've got it in front of me I don't know if I'm going to use these or not we do have these little ports on the side here which I could just run the cables to um, obviously I'm only going to be using this in the winter and then during the summer I want it nice and small and stored away so the reason for these were I could just unhook it, throw it away, not throw it away, put it away. Um, but I could just unscrew it from here. Uh, I'll see how it goes, I just don't know if I have any room for these anymore. But we'll see what happens. So I'm going to go outside now, cut this, and then bring it back in and try and fold it all, I think. Okay, so this is the final shape that's cut out. I'm gonna peel everything off now. But this is the idea. Oh, and I've also slightly modified this as well. And it's just because this is like 100 mil wide and the fan is 80 mil wide. So these are the sides and I need them to come in more. So that's why I had to trim those down. But yeah, as you can see, this is gonna fold up this will fold up and then this will be on top and then the two ends here are also going to fold up as well so I'm going to try and bend it as much as I can now and 
then I will be, still be able to like, take this out, put the modules on the bottom and do all the wiring. Okay, that did not go as I planned it to. Yeah, uh, started to bend and then just snapped. This is a problem. I don't know if I, if I did, like, I don't know if I cut if I cut it slightly better, like if I cut it slightly deeper, would it then bend? Is it because I'm bending it and then the two sides are meeting and then it obviously can't bend anymore? So am I better off bending it the other way? Do I maybe learn how to weld or solder aluminium this is a problem all right you have to put everything away now and have a think what i'm going to do is just start uh, laying out the modules uh, with the thermal paste and trimming all the cables and soldering all of them together Okay, so this part is all done. I've soldered them all together and just put a little bit of heat shrink over them all. Uh, now a good point to notice that you should have the right hand side facing up. This is where the heat's going to sort of be hitting and the other side is the cool side. Um, and what I've done is sort of link them in series and then this negative comes around to this side positive and then we go all the way off and then we've just got these two cables here which is your positive and negative. And that is basically it, that's how you wire them up. So I'm going to let this go off overnight, I'll put the thermal paste over it. That was probably the most trickiest bit, just trying to spread that out. It's such a weird paste. Um, but yeah, really happy with how this came out now. Slight change of plan. Instead of folding everything like I wanted it to, I've now cut them into individual pieces. And I was going to try and get this done in one video um, and to glue it all together I've got some uh, it's like plumbing flue and it's basically what you use on like the chimneys and everything and the wood burners just to seal it all up and it's got a like a high resistance temperature um, but because it's like a silicon I didn't think it would give it much structure and if I decided to pick it up I imagine it might just fall to pieces Company. Good. So what I've gone with is JB Weld. Um, they do a epoxy adhesive, um, but no one around here uh, stocks it. So we've had to order it online and it's going to come to uh, Argos in Inverness. So we're going to pick that up next week and then I'll be able to really assemble everything together and test it. So yeah, that's going to be the end of it for this episode. I'm just going to file all of these individual pieces now. I won't record it, it's not fun. But uh, yeah, stick around for next week's video where we will hopefully see this working.